What about networks and pods? Yeah. Well, another common thing to do with Docker, especially when running several applications on the same host, is to make networks that isolate, you know, the different containers that need to talk to each other. If I've got a web app and a database, I might put them in their own network. If I've got another, I don't know, web app and a different database, or I don't know, I always use web app and database as the example here. There's tons of use cases where you have several containers that have to talk to each other. Maybe they're microservices that talk to each other over API calls, right? You might put them in the same network. I just wanted to make sure everyone knew that that is still a thing in Podman. You can absolutely do a Podman network. What does it create? My network. And then if I did that Podman network LS, it'll show me I now have a My network as well. And when I make a new container, I would just tell it what network to attach that container to, and it'll attach it to that network. And then they'll have local container only networking to work with. So that's really handy for a network isolation from within your containers. However, if you're going to go to Podman, I, I would be remiss to not mention that Podman has another method for letting you do that, which is also very similar to what you would do in the Kubernetes world or an OpenShift world with pods. I think they might be called applications or apps within OpenShift and Kubernetes. I don't do a lot of Kubernetes stuff. I do mostly Podman for containers. Basically, you can make a, a pod which also takes those containers and puts them in the same namespace and in the same network. It's a much cleaner way to group your containers. So if I did a podman pod create dash dash name my pod, this will make a pod. If I create new containers and I say pod when I'm creating them, which is where this command line starts to diverge from Docker. Docker, I don't think has a pod command switch because they don't have pods. You can then put containers within that pod. And then if I do a podman pod PS, I can start and stop the entire pod at once. So I can say, this is my web application. It's got the database and the API stuff in it. If I stop that pod, it stops all the containers within it, shuts down the network that they're talking on. And then if I want to start it back up, I, pod, I start the whole pod up which I think is a much cleaner way to manage your applications than just doing networks and things. So that's a quick and dirty introduction to pods. We could certainly delve deeper into that and into another episode if anybody's really interested. In fact, we might have episodes where we talked about pods. I seem to remember doing this recently. <laughs> we did an episode last year on uh, Podman Pods. It's pretty, covers all the basics for sure.